So we're gonna learn how to take derivatives of all the inverse trig functions. So the basic idea, so if we have an inverse function, we can rewrite it. We can take f of both sides and then they'll cancel. Or you could actually take the function, the original function f of x and swap x and y and that would be our inverse function. That's what you'd get here. Take the derivative of both sides, chain rule, solve for dy dx. But remember, let's back substitute in for x, y is f inverse, so here's our formula. But to be honest, what we just did there is exactly how we're going to take the derivative of all the inverse trig functions. We're not going to use the formula. The, using the formula is much harder. We don't have a derivative of the inverse if the inverse doesn't exist. So let's recall. So if the function's one to one, the inverse exists. And the test for that, for a function, it's a vertical line test, but for inverses, it's a horizontal line test. Another test is one that uses calculus. Yeah, so if we can show that the function's always increasing, then it's gonna be one to one, or similarly for decreasing. The idea is if it's always increasing, it won't come back down and it'll definitely pass the horizontal line test. So the way to show that a function's always increasing is to find the derivative and show that the derivative is always positive. And for decreasing, we can show that derivative is always negative. So let's write that out. So now let's do an example. So does it exist? To find out, we're going to take the derivative. Well, 5 is positive, x squared is positive, 6 is positive. We can clearly see this is strictly greater than 0. Therefore, yes is 1 to 1. Therefore, inverse exists. So we're going to find the inverse and then take the derivative of it. So our function, this is our function. We'll change that to y. And to find our inverse, the nice thing about this is we don't have to solve for y in order to find the derivative of the inverse. Mm -hmm. So it's much simpler. We just take the derivative of both sides in terms of x. Again, we want to find, and this is my inverse. So I take the derivative in terms of x of both sides. This is 1, 0, this is 5, chain rule. We have to chain rule this also. And now solve for dy dx. And we started out with x's. I think we can put it back in terms of x. This is y. So just plug in y. 6y squared plus 5. And this is my y. That's it. That's how you use the formula. We didn't even use the formula. We're going to do the same process with finding the inverse of all the trig functions. We're going to start off with sine of x. So we're going to let y equal to the sine inverse of x. So that is the inverse. We don't need to find the inverse, but we don't know what that derivative of the inverse is. So we're going to rewrite this without that inverse symbol. So take sine of both sides. This is equivalent. So now that we have that, we want to basically find dy dx of that equation. So that's what we're doing taking d dx of this equation. So we know what the derivative of sine of y is. It's cosine of y, but we have to chain rule it times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of x is 1, dx dx, just 1. Solve for dy dx. And last but not least, plug back in for y. So it's cosine of y, so it's cosine of the inverse sine. So we're not done because we're not going to leave it like this. Even though it's all in terms of x, we know we can find the composition of trig functions. We did this in the last chapter on, I think it was chapter 1.7, video 1.7. So we want the cosine of this angle. The inverse function is an angle. So we'll call theta equal to the sine inverse of x. We're going to sketch that out. Or if you want to look at it this way, take the sine of both sides. And that's a ratio. 
Sine of theta is the opposite over hypotenuse, and we want to know what the cosine of that angle is. That's our goal. We want the cosine of this angle. This angle is theta right there. It's the same. So it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So we need to find adjacent. We'll call that A. We need to get A in terms of X. It's a right triangle. Now this could be plus or minus, but sine inverse is in quadrant one or four. Cosine of an angle in quadrant four is positive. So therefore it is positive. We're almost there. It's one over this composition. It's the cosine of that angle. It's A over one, and we have our A. Again, it's this over one. We're going to go ahead and do the same for cosine inverse. Again, my y is cosine inverse, so it's the sine of the cosine inverse. We have another composition. We'll draw it in quadrant one, but you'll see cosine inverse is here and here. So the sine of that angle, we'll call this my angle, which is this angle in here. So my theta equals cosine inverse of x inside, which that angle could be here or there. It's the range of cosine inverse. Cosine of theta equals x, so that is x over 1. x could be negative over 1. Oops, sorry, hypotenuse. So yeah, cosine of theta is x over 1. Adjacent over hypotenuse, we have to find this. Maybe we can see just by looking, it's going to be 1 squared minus x squared, which is just 1 minus x squared. If you need to do the work, it's x squared plus b squared equals 1 squared b squared equals 1 minus x squared. And again, we can see it's the same over here. So we really just need to do it in quadrant 1 when we're sketching it. We solve for both of them. So now, let me write it here. So we want the sine. This is my angle theta. So we want the sine of that theta. The sine of that theta is opposite over 1. We don't need that one on the bottom. And there's my derivative of cosine inverse. So I just want to point out we got the same thing, but they were off by a negative. Does that sound a little familiar? Remember co-functions? So this is my sine, and the co-function of sine inverse is cosine inverse. And it's the same derivative, except it's by a negative. But of course, there's no cofunctions to take over here. But it still follows that pattern. Anytime you have any trig function, you take the cofunction, cofunction. And if this is the cofunction, you throw a negative in there. So that's going to work for the other, others also. So really, I only have to prove two more. Place that with what y is equal to, and let's find that composition. I notice how I pulled that square out. I just thought it would be easier to uncomplicate things. But we could see the answer is always going to be positive, so therefore we can just do it in quadrant one. So we call this theta. Tan theta equals x. Write it as a ratio. There's my theta. It's x over 1. Call that c. Again, it's always going to be positive, so we can ignore the negative. So the secant of that angle, instead of the cosine, it's the reciprocal. And don't forget that is squared right here. So my answer is... I'll be honest, those are the only four that I make you memorize. And also be ready on the next exam to work any of them out that I ask. Basically prove um, the inverse trig functions, what they are, by following this process. And you'd have to write your triangle also.
to show your work. I will go ahead and do one more though. So we have two compositions to work out here. This is where it gets a little bit hard, but it's not too bad. We're gonna call this theta. Let's draw it. Secant theta is in quadrant one and two, just like cosine theta. Remember, we have a limited output because it has to be one to one. We had to restrain it. So the height, some of you can be, are probably able to do it in your head. You're just subtracting the bigger squared, the bigger one squared minus the little one squared. So this composition is tangent of that angle theta, which is going to be this over this. Now you might think that these cancel, and they do, but we have to think about um, the sign of it, the S-I-G-N. Is it positive or is it negative? So we know it's gonna be positive if X is positive because we're in quadrant one, that's easy. So if we're in quadrant two, then we have to be careful. If we're in quadrant two, we have to look at both of these too, by the way. Um, the tangent of this angle in quadrant two is negative. The, the secant, which is the cosine of this in quadrant two is gonna be negative. Well, then when we multiply them both together, it's gonna be positive. So the output's always gonna be positive. Well, X doesn't always have to be, so we have to throw that on top. And there's our formula. Again, using co-functions, we get both formulas. So writing these formulas out, I'll use u now instead of x. Use the chain rule. Okay, let's do some examples. Again, if it helps you to look at this formula, it's one plus u squared. We can see our u is x squared. So it's one over the u times the derivative of that u in terms of x. And we can leave it like so. Last one. We can use the power rule if we like. If you wanna list it out, you can. Not necessary though. And then the chain rule. And there we have it. Okay, thanks for watching.